First of all, I wanted to thank all of the viewers that subscribed to my channel. With the last video, we broke the 1,000 subscriber mark. Really means a lot to see so many people supporting my endeavors on this channel. Today, I'll be showing you a project that I began seven years ago. We'll be discussing a 3D printed LCD panel monitor that can be used for all of my 8-bit computers and gaming consoles. Stick around and we'll build one together. Welcome to 3D Thursday on 8-Bit Resurgence. So this all started seven years ago when I found myself hard pressed to find a monitor for my Commodore 64 that didn't take up a ton of desk space. We all know how massive CRTs are and desks today are a lot shallower than they used to be. I had heard about these LCD panel driver boards that could work with LCD panels found on old disused laptops. I hadn't been doing 3D design for very long back then and without a decent vision of what I wanted it to look like, what I ended up designing was, albeit functional, truly an abomination. It's really quite awful. Prepare yourself. This is the monitor that I came up with. As you see, it has a horrible foot. Looks like, I don't know, the claw of a bird and a huge ugly beefy base on the back you'll notice that i actually hacked off the lid off the laptop and just scabbed these boards onto the bottom frame and this terrible little foot in the back it really is uh, a terrible design that i had come up with So once I had finished this, the intent was to come up with a better vision and redesign it because I really hated it. Well, one project led to another and this one remained on the back burner for the next seven years. You'd think I could have found a few days to come up with something better, but nope. I bought the panel driver boards and some old laptops, just never got to it. Well, that is until recently. You see, what drove me to actually pick up this project again was my Mega 65. The Mega 65 works wonderfully and looks terrific on a modern widescreen panel. But when displaying a stretched out Commodore 64 session on that wide display, I felt something needed to be done. I blew the dust off that horrible monitor and tried it out. The results were fantastic. The Mega 65 looked awesome in its native mode and given the monitor's aspect ratio, the 64 mode was perfect. That was really all it took to drive me to come up with what I'm going to show you and what we're going to build today. The new design had to have a Visa compatible mount, specifically the 100mm by 100mm mounting pattern. It also needed to be able to be mounted to a compact stand that could be vertically adjustable. That was the brief I came up with. So I sat down and really it didn't take that long, four days in fact, from concept to a monitor sitting in front of me. This is the monitor that I came up with. As you can see, it's mounted to a monitor arm using the Visa mounting configuration, and it is the monitor that I now use with my Mega 65. And this is the standalone version I've been using on my Commodore 64 and other 8-bit machines. You can see in this configuration, it's attached to a stand and that the screen can be vertically adjusted. Let's go over to the bench and we'll assemble one of these things. As I go along, I'll discuss the various features of the design and you can see how it goes together. Okay, so we have everything that we need to build a monitor. I've pre-built everything. Um, I've put heat sets and everything uh, so it's ready to assemble. So what you see um, on your screen right now is the back piece, the center um, logo for the back of the monitor, 
um, the four bra corner brackets and the frame right here. So those are the major pieces. Um, there's also a stand uh, that's kind of off screen. It's it's kind of large to show um, show on the on this camera setup, but you'll see that in a in a bit once we get this assembled. And then of course there's the panel, which is um, already been removed. It's out of a Lenovo T41 laptop. So it's just a, a basic LCD panel. Um, so, and that's uh, what we're gonna be making our monitor out of today. So this, this is the back piece. It looks kind of crazy, but uh, it has a, a 100 millimeter uh, Visa mount on the back. So that'll fit on any monitor arm or on the standalone stand um, that I designed for it. Uh, on the sides, there are holes um, through the sides here to run cables um, through. Um, there's also some L-shaped holes um, that are right here, there, there, and there. There's four of them. And they're designed uh, to tie the wires um, and make it nice and tidy. They're L-shaped holes, so they go in from the top and come out the side. And I curved it inside so that you can just stick a bundle tie in any of the holes and it just goes straight through um, without any trouble at all. So it's really easy to stick a bundle tie in there, tie off the wires, uh, takes no time at all. So this is, this is the back, it's got uh, heat sets here that's for the button board there's four heat sets two underneath and yes the control board does go underneath the visa mount reason for that is the control board as you'll see in a minute is rather large and if i had it sit too far down on the back of the monitor the cables uh the connection cables you know whatever you're using composite vga hdmi um, they would hang out the bottom and wouldn't really look nice so i shifted everything up and adjusted the height of the stand accordingly as well and uh, it worked out quite well so that's that's the equipment that goes on here on this side um, this little arm and is for the uh, the ballast and uh, so I'll show you that next so I've already pre-assembled one so I'll just take this uh, off frame here and bring in an assembled board so this is, um, this is the assembled one. There's a ballast, as you can see, mounted there. The control board, a um, couple holes in the visa mount so you can get um, the hex key into the screws and the heat sets underneath there. And it's nice and firmly attached to the back. And the button board is on that side. So uh, if you're facing it, your left hand, you can just reach behind and push the buttons and make it do what you want. This is the connector um, that plugs into the back of the panel. And uh, that's really all there is to this, this um, control board. It's, it's really quite straightforward. So I'll put this aside for now because we don't need it quite yet because we're going to build the monitor first. So to do that, um, we have the, the front monitor frame. And that uh, consists of four pieces. I couldn't print the, the whole frame as one piece because it's too big for my printer. So I had to print them individually. And these long ones actually had to print them diagonally on my print bed um, to make them fit. So uh, how, how I assemble it is I start uh, with the bottom and I set up the, the two corners at the bottom the the rails interlock into one another and there's uh this particular bracket i don't dump the screws out you can see there's a little channel there and i don't know if you can see it in the camera but there's a little channel there um that's the corner where the wire that goes to the ballast for the backlight for the monitor comes out so in order to avoid pinching the wire um there's a, a little bit of a ease in the frame there and in the bracket uh, to allow that to route through without any pinching. So we'll attach these. I'll just make it go fast so you don't have to wait while I 
I do this. All right, with the frame assembled loosely at the bottom, we can slide the panel in. Again, there's this the wire that I was talking about. So when we put it into the frame, we have to make sure that we're um, not pinching that wire. So we've left it all loose so it can slide in nicely. that wire doesn't get pinched when we slide it into the base of the frame and now that it's in place we can snug up these screws all right now that the bottom is in we can spin this around and we can put the top on um, part of the frame in. That just slides in like that. And then we're just going to um, pop these two brackets on here. All right, so you may have noticed that I did switch these two brackets around because I wasn't paying attention. This, um, that little heat set needs to be at the bottom uh, to be able to retain the bottom of the ballast. So I've just lightly snugged them up there. I haven't cranked them down yet. They're all, it's still a little bit loose, but here we can see what the monitor looks like now. It's got a frame and the panel is is secured in the in the frame so now we're going to attach the the back that has all the electronics and everything that we need on it so for that we're going to need some screws so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach or we're going to connect the ballast and that's a little bit fiddly, so I'll just have to make sure that the wire goes in the right way. So the ballast is connected and we just have to connect the, um, the display wire. So we're going to, since this is going to sit like that, we're going to run this wire through uh, the, the inside. Just make sure we don't stress that ballast wire too much when we're doing this. And then we'll just plug this into the monitor. Okay, so that's connected. So now we're just going to um, connect this back portion to the monitor frame. For that we'll, again, we'll go a little bit quick so you don't have to endure me fishing all these screws through and uh, mounting it so I'll just zoom forward a little bit and then we can see where we're at all right now we'll uh, just snug up the corners and then we're pretty much finished building this um, this monitor there really isn't that much more to it other than attaching it to the stand if you were going to uh, use a stand for it or if you were just going to put it on a monitor arm then basically you're just a matter of mounting it hooking up power supply and your computer and and you'd be done so i'll just finish tightening these ones up and then uh, we'll put it on the stand all 
Okay, so one last thing that I want to do is we have this wire here, then it's a little bit messy. So I think we're going to feed this over here and we're going to use that bundle tie that I showed you earlier. And we're just going to um, isolate that. So we just um, find the hole and stick the bundle tie through it and then uh, feed that through. Make sure the wire is in where it's supposed to be and then just tighten down the, the bundle tie. And then we're just going to have to trim off the excess so it's tidy. Make sure I don't cut through a wire. Be careful. Alright, so that's done. And we now have a monitor. We have the, uh, the ballast is there and it's all connected. We have, we have the connection points. Everything is nice and tight. So now we're going to move over to installing this, um, installing the stand. And this is the stand. And it simply attaches to the back like that with some rather long screws. And now that all the screws are in, we'll just tighten them up. And then the last finishing touch is this badge that I designed and it, it just uh, it's just a pressure fit. Make sure it's nice and straight and then it just snaps in and that's done. So here here's the finished finished product. We just finished putting the the badge on the back. Not perfectly straight. There we go. Um, so that finishes off the back and uh, there's the, the finished assembled monitor. Not the best camera angle, but you get the idea. It's adjustable. You can adjust it to wherever you'd like um, to have it tilted, depending on how tall you are. And then you can just tighten it with the thumb screws and that locks it in place. So let's take it over to the, um, to where I have my Commodore 64 and we'll hook it up and we'll see what it looks like. All right, I've got it set up, um, connected to uh, 64G, so that's PAL, but it will also work in NTSC fine. Um, yeah, I've got everything plugged in the back, run through the holes right there. Um, see the little red power light? And then uh, we just do, there's a little button right beside it. So we'll just push the button and then uh, the monitor will come to life like that. It says AV and then we turn the power on the 64 and we have a little 14 inch monitor that's quite capable. So I have my, my uh, Pi 1541 here. So I'll just uh, choose a game. Now, uh, keep in mind, I don't have any sound connected. I just hooked up the monitor. Um, so you won't hear any sound when I load the game, but we'll, we'll just load Jumpman. And there it is, it's loaded and uh, ready to have have fun playing these old games clearly not very good 
but you can see the uh, the graphics look fine. Um, there are settings on the buttons on the back that can bring up the various menus. Um, that button will bring up the sources, AV, HDMI, PC, media. That's if you want to plug something into the USB connector. I think it's like a picture frame then if, if, uh, if you choose to use that. Um, but it's a nice little monitor. Takes up very little space. And uh, it repurposes an old junky laptop that would normally just go to an echo station because it's not really worth anything on eBay anymore. So you can get a better view, I'll leave you with these photos of the monitor we just built. That was my 3D printed retro monitor. Spoiler alert, I plan on doing a couple Commodore 64 networking videos in the future. So I'll be building a few more in the coming weeks. What drove me all these years ago to make my own 4x3 monitor is still true today and having a monitor with this aspect ratio that accepts not only Commodore signals, but VGA and HDMI, I think is really cool. Would any of you want to take on this project and build one yourself? I don't know, you tell me. I'm not sure if I'd make a physical product available in the shop, as there's quite a bit of print time, prep time, and materials needed to build the standalone unit. I have rather large FDM printers, and I designed the parts to fit on what I had. It certainly couldn't be printed in its present form on smaller printers, however. I suppose it could be chopped up, printed on these smaller machines, and reassembled. I do plan on making the print files available in the Print It Yourself section on my shop for a nominal charge, if there's any interest. I also recently picked up an old 15 inch T42 that I bought a driver board for, so I'll be adapting the design for that larger panel. I mean, why not, right? I hope you've gotten a little something from this insight into the design and construction of my 3D printed retro monitor. If there are any other topics you'd like to see featured in these 3D Thursday segments, please feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments below. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Click on the bell icon to be notified of new uploads. Likes and comments are always appreciated. We'll see you next time on 8-Bit Resurgence. Bye for now.